In this section, we're going to review the organization network types and introduce vApp networks. The first thing we'll do is review our organization network types. So if you're not on the home page, click home, and then on the far right is manage networks. And you can see the list of our organization networks here. And again, we'll review the types. The first type is direct. Direct means that the provider gives us an external network and then gives us direct access to it, including the network IP addresses that this external network uses. There are no firewall and no features available with a direct network. So typically the only things that you want connected to a direct network are firewalls or virtual machines that have their own firewall. Direct networks can also be point-to-point -point circuits or simply a VLAN to another data center. Internal networks are completely isolated. They don't touch the outside world. And routed networks are connected to an external network that a provider gives us, but are connected through something called a V-Shield Edge, which we'll talk about later. This allows us to have an internal IP scheme on our organization network, but also utilize addresses on the external network through network address translation. So we'll now introduce the concept of vApp networks. If we come back to my cloud, you can see that we're in our web application. And right now we have all of our virtual machines hooked up to this direct network, which is directly on our internet connection. In this case, we want to add a vApp network to provide some firewall capabilities. So the first step to this is actually creating the vApp network. So if we come to the Networking tab, click the Show Networking Details box. You can see our direct organization network here that's part of our vApp. We're going to add a network. So we'll click Add Network. And you can see we can add two different types of networks to this vApp, a vApp network and an organization network. Adding an organization network does not let us create new organization networks, but rather just add existing organization networks to our vApp. What we want to do is create a brand new network and it'll be a vApp network and then we'll click next and then this is where we define the parameters of our network. So you can see we have a network mask. Typically a 24-bit mask is suitable. Increasing the mask will give you less IP addresses and decreasing it will give you more. And then the default gateway is the other required piece. And this is really two parts. So first we're defining the network that this vApp network is, and then we're defining the gateway IP address or node address. So in my case, I might go with a network on the 10.x range. So we're going to change our network to 10.0.1, which is 10.0.1. And if I wanted to, I could change the gateway address to something like the last IP in this range, something like a 254. But we're going to go ahead and leave it dot one. The primary and secondary DNS entry boxes are simply for guest customization. So when a virtual machine goes through guest customization, it'll plug these values into its configuration. We're going to go ahead and set these to Google's DNS servers. And then we're going to set our DNS suffix to great company. Again, this is optional and is only part of the guest customization. The next piece is our static IP pool. You can see that our static IP pool no longer matches what our network is, so we're going to have to modify this. To modify it, simply just click on the pool and then we can change the network addresses. Once you've made the modifications, go ahead and click Modify, and it updates it in the list. If I wanted to remove this particular pool, I can click Remove. And if I wanted to add another pool, I can simply put in a new pool, and then click Add. And you can see we have two different pools from vCloud Director to choose from when assigning a static IP to our virtual machines. So for now, I'll remove this one. We'll click Next. Because it's a vApp network, we have control over its name, so we'll call this webapp-network. We can put in a description if we need to, and then we can click Next. 
and vCloud Director is ready to create this network. You can see we have a network name, all of our IP address settings, and then we can simply click finish. Probably the thing that people forget most is the sneaky apply button down in the lower right hand side. Just for fun, let's go ahead and try and leave this page. Well, as we can see, it didn't warn me. If I come back to our web application and then back to networking, show network details, you can see that all of the changes that I tried to apply are in fact missing. So we'll have to go through the entire VApp network process again. So let that be a lesson to you. Always click the apply button. So we'll do this very quickly again, since we've been through it once, we'll say add network. Review our configuration, it all looks good. And then click finish. Now once again, just clicking the finish button does not apply it to the vApp. So clicking the apply button will then add this particular network to the vApp. And there we are. So we have our new vApp network and right now it is connected to nothing else. So this means it's an internal network to this web app. The other thing that we still need to do is hook up our virtual machines to this network since they're all still connected to this great code direct network. So we'll come back to our virtual machines and our vApp and we will right click on a virtual machine and go to properties. We'll go to the hardware tab and you can see that under my NICs I don't have the option to change the network that this network adapter is connected to. In order to modify the network that a virtual machine is connected to we need to either power off the vApp and make the change in the web UI, or we need to use a tool that utilizes the vCloud API, which allows us to do things like hot modify networks or disks. We're gonna go ahead and power it off and do it through the web UI. All right, so my vApp is stopped and all of my virtual machines are in fact powered off. And we'll go into each one of these, click properties, click hardware, and then modify the network that their network adapters are connected to. In this case, we're gonna be changing from an org network connection to a vApp network connection. So we'll click the network. We wanted to select an IP and then assign it statically. It's gonna ask us if we want our guest customization enabled when I click OK. So we'll go ahead and allow it to do that. And then I've installed operating systems on my other two virtual machines as well. So We'll click on the virtual machine, right click, we'll click properties. We'll click on hardware. We'll change it to our web app network and click OK. Do we want to enable guest customization? The answer is yes. Click on this one, right click and click properties. We'll click on hardware and then change this network as well. Yes, we want to do this now. I can't stress enough when you're changing networks like this, be aware that guest customization will change your IP addresses for you. It will re-customize the host name and everything else that's set within guest customization, including generating a new SID. So make sure that's exactly what you want to do before you do it. All right, so we've modified all three of our virtual machines. If we come back to the vApp diagram, you can see that the web app network is connected to all three of our virtual machines and we have nothing connected to our great code direct network.